Good morning, peeps. Welcome to another vlog. So I just got out of the supplier right now. This is something that I had to do a couple of weeks ago. I had to come to the supplier, make an account essentially so I could buy materials for jobs. And we got a juicy job for you today. So I ended up running out and buying a bunch of supplies. We're doing one kitchen drain. But one thing that I got to tell you about being a business owner now is that I got to be way more aware of how much things cost. So for example, before I knew the general prices of what things were, but now I got to know specifically because there are two entities I'm taking care of in this situation. I got to take care of the entity of the business. The business itself needs to make money. And also there is the worker, the person that I am, the laborer or the plumber in this instance as well. So both individuals need to be making money in this situation. And that's why you really got to know what you're charging for everybody. So by taking it this route and buying the material beforehand, I'm able to know, okay, what is material going to cost? We now need to calculate pipe, add a little bit of buffer for pipe. And then we also have to calculate time. It takes a approximately an hour to do a kitchen drain. So I'm hoping with all this new information, I can price it in such a way where it's competitive, meaning it's cheap enough for the customer to say, yeah, you know what? That sounds like it's in the right ballpark, but also competitive for the company so that it makes a little bit of money. And of course me, the worker needs to get paid my whatever wage is on the hourly basis. So this is brand new territory for Kenny Molotov because of the new company and because of this jazz, but I'm excited about it. I'm glad to know more and more about what things were happening in the background when I was working at the previous company. And we're gonna head out and do some delicious plumbing. I ended up buying a Milwaukee sectional drain machine specifically for jobs like this. So we're gonna have to go in, recreate the drain and also snake the drain after to make sure that it's functioning correctly because currently it's in a lot of mess and they have backups on the regular you know what i'm saying so peeps let's get to work let's have some fun oh and by the way peeps you know what to do baby let's go do some delicious plumbing Alrighty, here on the job site, I just wanna show you the drain, first of all, some of the areas that I think are causing this backup to constantly take place. Let's take a look. So first of all, the drain doesn't look too bad in its original form. Everything up here looks like it's not designed correctly. Nothing I'm too worried about until I get to this section right here. So if you take a look at the angle at this 45, coming this way, I'm not sure if it shows on the camera, but basically, this has backslope. And what that means is, is we want the water to move in this direction. However, the way it's sloping is making gravity take it backwards in the opposite direction. So if we had this sloped correctly, our bubble would look somewhere around here basically to get the appropriate amount of slope. But because it is sloped with back slope, what ends up happening is whatever the drain is taking out towards the sewer is actually being left behind inside the trap. So it's slowing all the debris as it goes out basically and only the liquid is able to make its way out. So what we have to do is rearrange this entire drain altogether. Same design, new pipes, new basket strainers. And then we got to make sure that we actually cut this 45 out put in a new 45 so that it's angled correctly and that way it's sloping in this direction. The only thing we've ever run into with these basket strainers here, when these are installed, they're actually installed in two different pieces right here. You can actually see the little ridge on the inside right here. These ridges should actually line up with one another in order to let the food go out. But a lot of times people aren't paying attention to them as they're installed. So what ends up happening here is because you have a ridge here on the internal piece and a ridge on top, it's a perfect environment to catch food and actually catch it between the two parts of the basket strainer. So that's one thing that's a little bit irritating. Once we got a call from a customer basically saying, your drain's smelling. And we didn't understand why we thought the P-Trap might have been uh, siphoned or something like that. But no, it was actually the basket strainer ended up catching the food in between the two sections. So we opted to eventually just get rid of those, put in new ones. The ones we're gonna be putting in are the ones you typically see me put in, which is one solid piece the food has to go through only one layer layer and that's it it goes into the drain and then makes its way out we're going to do an entire drain design right now and in the latter portion we're also going to be snaking it just to make sure that because this drain was slow in the 
past. We're gonna clear it all out, flush it. I'm gonna be putting in a clean out for that. Make sure it's nice and clear and good to go. Let's go. So peeps, I wanted to quickly talk about how I ended up taking out these basket strainers. First of all, we should note that they are mounted by securing a nut that's dead center to the basket strainer itself. And you normally thread this in using a screwdriver and they are way easier to put in than they are to take out like a lot of plumbing you'll meet. But my usual method to take these out is to gravitate towards a screwdriver to unthread it or just destroy them by using snips and cutting them straight out. But today I came up with a different idea which was super convenient. I used a set of small needle nose vice grips and I chomp them onto the nut itself and they made it way easier to unthread them. So kind of like I was telling you before, if you take a look, it is perfect trap for food basically if you don't have these line up correctly, which is different from the ones that we're going to be introducing because look, you have the one strainer on the top but that's it. It's already got the bottom piece connected in. This is one unit opposed to this this is one unit, that's one version of the strainer or one element. And then this is the second part of the strainer as well. So you got two strainers and food get caught, gets caught in between, ends up smelling and also slowing down the drain as well in the long run. This is a job that really shows how important the fine details of our work is. As I said earlier, the drain itself actually looks good. The design of it is typical of what most plumbers would install, but upon examining the details, you start to see some major flaws, like the backfall or the back slope that goes towards the P-trap. If that wasn't there and it had the appropriate pitch, we would actually be able to have appropriate drainage throughout this time, and we probably would have never gotten a call ever for this drain. But with that major flaw, and also the original basket strainers that were not installed in their most ideal setup, which upon examination, the homeowners were saying that the strainers were leaking profusely during the backups. And on top of that, there was also no clean out added, which would bring the drain up to code. We now are in a circumstance where the drain needs to be repiped altogether because we need to change all those major flaws that it currently has. Just want to show you very quickly. This is the buildup of food because of a slow drain. Just keep that in mind. That's why we want a drain to have appropriate pitch or slope. That way it doesn't clog up like this and look like this. So let's go ahead, put a 45 on it. I'll clean this out as well. Make sure that we have a good opportunity to uh, have some good flow afterwards. But again, remember I am still going to be running in a drain machine to make sure this is cleared up nice, okay? I want to give you all a quick tip, okay? At the beginning of my apprenticeship, I always had a problem with finding the level of angles because you try to put a level on the top and you want to be able to get the right angle. You couldn't figure it out. So find your level, make sure it has a couple of different ways of reading and trust the face because the face will actually tell you whether or not you have the appropriate pitch, basically. So take a look here. Throw this on top. And now you can see that it has slope going towards it, just like so. Perfect. And that's what we're aiming for right there. I'm gonna glue it in this position, wiggle it, and use my angle again to verify the appropriate slope. Gluing is a very nerve-wracking process because you learn early on that it is a time-sensitive procedure. Many times in my formative years, I've glued fittings with way too much slope or the wrong angle without time to take them apart because ABS glue cures extremely fast. But I just want you all to know this is part of the process and there are still times now where I have to muscle out fittings or pipes before curing. Or heaven forbid, I sometimes glue something totally wrong and yes, it's more rare now, but it's still happens. Start anew, get new fittings, and make sure that the end result is acceptable. That is the theme of this video right here.
know, it's really interesting how your psychology changes when you start working for yourself. There are times when you think to yourself, man, if I get stuck, I'm on my own. If I mess up, man, I'm on my own. I don't have the same avenues I once did for help, and it's both scary and anxiety producing all at the same time. But one thing that I have to say in this entire journey that I've dealt with in this recent few months, when one door closes, another one opens, and that couldn't be more true for my situation. A friend of mine from plumbing school reached out to me a few months back when he heard my job situation was changing, and he introduced me to a really top-notch community of plumbers that I work for when I'm not busy with my own work, and that I can also call upon when I have questions or need help. So I just wanted to quickly say, Craig, I feel very blessed to have you as a friend and I can't thank you enough for the effort you put in for me. You didn't have to reach out, you didn't have to check in, you didn't have to introduce me, but you did and you had a profound impact on my life. And in a time when it was really dark for me, you were my flashlight. A few years ago, Craig put down his channel lock pliers and he put on a firefighter suit. And now that's what he does with his life. And I'm under the impression that the same drive Craig has to help people in dangerous and distressing situation was what I was blanketed with when this all happened. And because of his character and his drive, I think our communities are much safer with him in our lives. So Craig, from the bottom of my heart, thank you. And just like that, we are done a whole day of plumbing. So first and foremost, a couple of things we got to say in there. I ended up securing a drain to the piece of wood that was already there. It was already in a great position. So all I had to do was throw in an additional screw. The second thing that I had to do was actually secure the dishwasher hose upwards. The dishwasher hose, as you'll see with a lot of manufacturers recommendations, it's supposed to actually loop upward and then come down into the drain. So I ended up securing a little bit of strapping up there. I wrapped the strapping and some of uh, electrical tapes. That way the edges aren't sharp on the actual drainage hose. Uh, and I threw that up there. We went through a testing phase. Overall, everything looked nice and neat. What I gotta say about the drain machine, first and foremost, is it's really intuitive. And that's for individuals that have used drain machines before. When you put in reverse, it actually goes forward. When you put it forward, it actually unravels and comes out for you if you get it caught on some sort of thread. So it worked out like a dream, actually. A couple of things that I noticed that were different about the K50 was that I had no way of securing the coil uh, after I was fumbling around with getting another one in. And with the K50, because of the design it has where it's got this little kind of prong that you keep all of your uh, heads on right at the front of the machine, you were able to actually connect your 5 8 cable onto that and click it into it. That way it would never fall into the drain. And that's the one worry I have about this machine. Works like a charm but it doesn't have that extra mechanism that I can use. So I got to come up with another another strategy to make sure that I can do that if I need to, if you know what I'm saying. But overall, like I said, it was light. Bringing in the machine was pretty easy. Bringing in the coils was a dream. Throwing it on was easy. And the other thing that I noticed was that it is not a machine that runs constantly because it's on a battery. The K50, if you turn that on, it would constantly be running. It wasn't until you activated the jaws that it would spin for you. This thing is quiet when you fully unactivate the lever. It's quiet the entire time. You can get it to a point where it is on, but not activated on the jaws, but it's kind of weird releasing the lever and hearing it be quiet, but know that the moment you push on that lever, it's game, full torque, you know what I'm saying? So overall, I'm happy. I feel blessed to be able to have gotten that machine. Uh, it was really expensive, but really worth it. And I think it's gonna pay for itself very soon. Overall, I'm giving it right now a really high rating. I have to do a bunch of different uh, calls with it to see what it's capable of doing, you know, to find out uh, how robust of a machine it is. And again, it takes two different coils, five eights and seven eights as well. So, so far so good. So peeps, thank you for watching. Do me a favor, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button down below and that bell notification so you know exactly when we're getting videos. Smash that thumbs up button, share with friends, and I'll see you plumbers very soon. Kenny Molotov, guys. Peace, baby.